Today we're going to be talking about the early chapters of the book of Genesis. And in particular, ABR has held that uh, Genesis 1 through 11 presents to us actual factual historical events of how God created the world, how God created man, the fall of man, and the flood in particular. Now one of the questions that people ask about this is, are, aren't you just reading your Bible and not being scientific? Well, we're going to deal with just one aspect of that today with very important evidence with Dr. Brian Thomas of the Institute for Creation Research. Hello, Henry. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Probably something people have, some people have heard of what we call carbon-14 or radiocarbon dating. Well, we first have to understand just a little bit of science. In general, we have a carbon-14, which is a version of a carbon atom. The nucleus of the atom has a mass of 14, which is too heavy, and so it's unstable. The vast majority of carbon atoms are stable, mass of 12. This unstable carbon-14 atom does is it emits uh, radiation. As it emits this radiation, it restabilizes. It turns into nitrogen. So we have carbon-14 atoms that decay into nitrogen at a stable, measurable pace. It's a clock-like decay process. But when we measure radiocarbon, we're looking at the ratio of carbon-14, that's the unstable, to carbon-12, which is the stable isotope. That formula that we use to convert the ratios in a time estimate, uh, that formula includes assumptions. It has variables that we don't know the answer to. We don't know the original starting conditions. We don't know how much radiocarbon to stable carbon. We don't know the ratio of that original carbon-based sample. For artifacts within the last two to 3,000 years, it does align with other sources of dating, like pottery, as you guys know. But once you get into the old, old stuff, we have real divergence, I think. We are not talking about the millions or billions of years that different dating methods give. We're not talking about rocks. We are talking about things that were once alive that are now dead. Expand on that a little and also what the outer limits of the possible date. And you're right, we don't use radiocarbon as one of the isotope systems for quote unquote dating of, of igneous rocks. And the reason is because radiocarbon has a relatively short half-life, which is a way to, to express its decay rate. And that's what made it intriguing to a prior generation of ICR scientists who decided our model of the flood, if the flood is actual and factual, then that flood would explain all these rock layers, including the organic components, the organic fossils that they, that they contain. And so we thought, well, if the max shelf life for radiocarbon is 100,000 years in theory, and if we find radiocarbon in a sample, which has a secular age assignment well in excess of 100,000 years, they put assignments you know, um, in, in the order of millions tens of millions yes. or hundreds of millions of years. Uh, things from the past that the scientists claim are millions or billions of years old, and you find radiocarbon in them scientifically, then that obviously is a contradiction or a conflict. We did a project at the Institute called the RATE project. R-A-T-E stands for radioisotopes and the age of the earth. We got our own coal samples carefully extracted, and all 10 samples had a radiocarbon in these coals. Now, the coals are supposed to be millions of years old, but the radiocarbon content in those coals suggested that the coals were thousands, not millions of years old. And really, it's a, it's a fulfilled prediction of the flood model. The, our flood model says the flood deposited all these rock layers, including the coal layers that are sandwiched between some of these sedimentary rock layers. So we'd expect maybe to find some radiocarbon still in those coals, and we found it. Now, these are independent laboratories. These are not creationist laboratories, right? Yeah, that's right. And we had to use, uh, you know, a third party to maintain, you know, anonymity, and uh, so the bias wouldn't play as big a role. But then we mentioned diamonds. Diamonds are a girl's best friend, but they're also a creationist friend. And so they collected um, uh, ten diamonds, tested those, and lo and behold, a little less uh, radiocarbon in those than in the coals, but still measurable levels of radiocarbon in those diamonds. Now, diamonds have an age assignment uh, of three billion years, billion with a B like banana. But we would say the whole earth was created uh, just thousands of years ago. And that's consistent. It's more consistent for sure with uh, the result that we got from the right team. And it really confronts us, each individual, with am I going to trust what God says about the past or am I going to go with what's popular and cool? If we have radiocarbon in coal, if we have it in diamonds, 
And then we have these deeply buried fossil bones. Maybe there's radiocarbon in those. Sure enough, we've got several dozen samples of radiocarbon in fossil bones and many of them in dinosaur bones that we've collected and curated here at the Institute. Dinosaur samples that we have are generally uh, Cretaceous, uh, upper Cretaceous. And so the, the secular age assignment is something on the order of 70 million years, but we would just call it in the middle of the flood year. That one year deposited thousands of feet of geologic strata. And so we have radiocarbon results from the coals, the fossils, and all of these results keep coming in with radiocarbon more than way more than expected, which means that it looks thousands, not millions of years old from the perspective of the amount of radiocarbon that we're finding in these. Yes. And that gives us more confidence that Genesis really got something right. God is the eyewitness. Well, Dr. Thomas, thank you for all your hard work. Thanks for coming on the show again. Friends, thank you for watching Digging for Truth. We hope that uh, you think about this paradigm altering evidence that Dr. Thomas has presented. That you can trust the scriptures, the early chapters of Genesis as real history. Thank you for supporting us and joining us today.